um, from a, a, a vendor selection standpoint, um, how did you go about that process? Well, one, let me take a step back. How did you decide whether or not you wanted to build a model internally mm-hmm. versus perhaps purchasing a model yourself? What was, what was that journey like? Well, I actually started um, with building a mock model in-house. Okay. And basically, um, when I got com- when I completed it and I saw the results, it concerned me from the aspect of the segments were a lot larger than what they could be if you go into a vendor supplied software model, mm-hmm. um, because it's all in all, it was in an Excel spreadsheet. Right. So I saw the ve- well, I saw the value in going with a vendor from the perspective of I feel like if we can get down to the granular level of the loan per loan, Mm -hmm. that the requirement would actually be less. So ultimately it would be less expensive in the long run going with a vendor versus doing it in house. So let me, let me me kind of unpack it a bit. So when you, when you were doing it yourself in the Excel spreadsheet, you had larger pools. Correct. And it became more efficient to have your, it, your core interface with the third party model and in doing so, you were able to get more granular pools, thus allowing you to have less of a reserve than if you had had a larger pool because you were able to stratify the characteristics differently. Correct. That is exactly right. Okay. And so in some ways, um, I think when some people think about the cost of a model, in some ways it pays for itself because you're able to get granular and then have the data and the justification needed to support this both from your external audits perspective and your examiner's perspective when they get involved. That is correct. Yes, and there's another benefit to having the model as well. And currently we have a department that does proactive risk management on our loan portfolio.